Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us here at Christ Church Lutheran. Uh, we are so thankful that you are taking the time to uh, join us in worship um, in the midst of the busyness of our schedules, the craziness of the world, um, that you would take the time to be with us to just reflect and celebrate what God has done for us, that even in the midst of everything we're going through, that God's love hasn't changed and that he still wants to show us what that love is. So with that, let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. tells us in Matthew, come to me all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Our sins can weigh us down and hinder our relationship that our Heavenly Father wants with us. So let's confess our sins to God. God, we know we don't always get it right. We fall and stumble. We allow the things of this world to be our guide rather than letting you. We get anxious and fearful when we should be putting our trust in you. Lord, we take this time to confess those doubts, failures, and shortcomings to you now.
The good news is that we don't have to remain in that anxious and fearful state. The God of creation has promised to forgive us. We don't need to carry those things that weigh us down anymore. We can leave them at the cross. Because of his sacrifice and because of his love, we can rest assured that we are forgiven. Let's join together in proclaiming our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. so confused. I know I've heard you loud and clear, so I followed through. Somehow I ended up here. I don't want to think I might never understand that my broken heart is a part of your plan. When I try to pray, all I got is certain Our first reading for today comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time you may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. 
Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel message for today comes from Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him that debt. But when, the time, when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went to put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went out to report to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have had the mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do in every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Without them I would 
Good morning. I pray you are well. We have a few announcements before the sermon today. First of off is that we have communion services every Thursday. They have been in the chapel, but this week now they will be at 9.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Thursdays here in the church. If you're interested, you can see those items online, but 9.30 a.m., 6.30 p.m., one in the morning, one in the evening. As well, beginning a socially distanced book club, Eric Metaxic, seven men and seven women, a variety of people who have followed the Lord in the midst of difficult times. The example would be some people like George Washington, William Wilberforce, Eric Little, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Jackie Robinson, among others. And for the women, it would be People like Joan of Arc, Susanna Wesley, Hannah Moore, Corey Tenboom, Rosa Parks, Mother Teresa, among others. If you are interested, email me and we will give you the details in that respect. Pastor Dave has some uh, announcements in reference to how we can help people. Good morning, everyone. Give you an opportunity to serve here. Every Wednesday, we feed over 100 families from the community, and we roll about 250 burritos each and every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. If you've got a little time and you want to help us to make a delicious meal for our families in this community, uh, please contact me through email, dschmidt at cclphoenix.org. And the cost is roughly about $125 each week uh, to feed uh, over 250 to make 250 burritos so if you'd like to get involved in that way you could talk to me about helping out with the cost of feeding so many people in our uh, in our greater community god bless you and hope you have a wonderful day today so that's an So that's an add-on to our Wednesday event where we, in fact, help the families who come and get food boxes. Last week, again, we had 100 food boxes to give out. Thank you for your generosity. We appreciate it. This morning, I want you to look as we begin at this particular picture. Uh, I don't know if you saw this in the news, if you know what this is. I want you to turn to the person next to you and answer this question. If this was you, how would you feel? Well, in fact, this is David Blaine. David Blaine moved his stunt, if you will, from New York City to Arizona. It was near Page, Arizona, where he held on to 52 weather balloons and went across up to 22,000 feet up in the air. I would suggest to you that is anxiety producing. It might be thrilling for the short period of time, and then it might be extremely anxiety producing. Please pray with me. Lord God, we pray that you would take from us the things that hurt us, the things that cause us pain, the concerns we have in our life. We pray in particular that you would give us a confidence and a certainty that you are with us, that we cast our cares on you. In Jesus' name, amen. The truth is, you were not created to live in a constant state of anxiety. Have you said these words in this last period of time? I'm disappointed. This is hard. I don't like it. If any of you particularly like COVID, can you and I have a conversation? Because the level of this is disappointing and hard is pretty significant. And in fact, living in fear is exhausting. It can fatigue us. We can be overly, uh, have no energy. We can run through our mind the worst case scenarios again and again and again. That's not the way God would have us. Ha have you ever had this situation? Or this thing comes up on your car. You ever seen this? The check engine light. Now, you might say, I used to have a car that never had that. Now, a check engine light, I don't particularly like it.
because it doesn't give a lot of information. It says something's wrong. We don't know if that something's wrong is really big or really small, but something is wrong. And in Arizona, every two years you have to get your car specifically checked for emission. But you can't get your emissions test passed if you have your check engine light on. Some years ago, the month right before I needed to re-up my registration, the check engine light came on. So I went to my mechanic, he shut off the check engine light, but unfortunately the car has some specific things with it. And here's something called the drive cycle. In order to not go to the emissions place and have them still say no, I had to do these things. First, turn off the light. Check. Ensure your fuel tank is somewhere between 70 and 30, excuse me, 30 to 70 percent full. Check the quality of your battery and alternator. Jump starting your vehicle is not an option. Let your vehicle rest for eight hours. Do not put the key in the ignition or unlock the doors during this time. Start your car. Put it in park or neutral. Let it idle for two or three minutes. Turn on your headlights, heater, and defrosters for at least two minutes. Drive to where you can safely reach 25 miles an hour. Make it slow, full stop at each stop sign or stop light. Increase your speed slowly and steadily to 35 miles per hour and then 45 miles an hour. Find a freeway ramp and accelerate normally to merge on with other drivers. Stay in the slowest lane. Steadily increase your speed to 55 or 60 miles per hour. Activate cruise control and maintain speed for at least five miles. Find a decently sized exit ramp. Cruise to the end of it, allowing your vehicle to naturally decline in speed. You may use your brake at the end of the ramp. If this does not work, complete these sections again and again until it does. Um, that's anxiety producing. It isn't just a check engine light, but it's like the controlling of your life for a period of time. What does a check engine light mean? A check engine light means it's a signal that it's time to pray, really. Time to pray. If you have worry or concern or fear that is a signal that it's time to pray. When's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you, by yourself, because something was happening in your life, you prayed? Consider this statement. If it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. If it is big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. And here's the scripture. The scripture is 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. Can you read this out loud with me, please? Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. What is a cast? A cast is like fishing, right? You cast it out. When's the last time you cast? The word cast literally means to throw, to release, to surrender. Today I invite you to throw and release and surrender your cares. Now, I know those of you that are listening online, are watching online, I encourage you to consider the possibility that you would put in the comments below something you want the rest of us to pray for. Whether that's the, the fires in Oregon or the West Coast, whether that's a health need, whether that's a person, whether that's a circumstance, to throw, release, and surrender. We together can throw, release, and surrender these things to God. And I ask you the question, Today, have you cast today? We're now about 9.30 in the morning. Have you already got into the day and you are still not casting it to God? You still haven't given it to God? Sometimes when we cast, we get all tangled up. It's like this picture. We have a tangled life and we want to cast it to God and we want to take it back. We want to cast it to God and take it back. Sometimes we even get it caught in a tree. We... We don't really give it to him. But God says, cast all. All. Everything. It's kind of like emptying your pockets. You cast, empty. have you ever left something in your pocket? 
and it was washed in the washing machine and then dried in the dryer, or maybe it was a pen, maybe it was a situation like this and it got ink over everything. My wife and I constantly have that conversation that I haven't left my pen somewhere where it's going to create more work for her or myself. I want you to consider about praying yourself empty. Clean out your pockets. 20 years ago, TSA became much more significant. You ever gone through TSA and they say to you, you know, put up your hands, put out your, empty your pockets, do you have any electronics, take off your shoes? Sometimes I miscalculate. I go to the airport and they say have two hours. Sometimes I have two hours and I get through in 15 minutes. Other times I cut it too close. There was one time where I was cutting it too close and I needed to get my bag checked. I needed to get through TSA and I needed to get to the gate all on time. And so I was going quickly and I did not carefully look. They said, did you clean out your pockets? Yes, I did. But as I went through, the alarm went off. And then the people make you stand in another line. And do you know what made me stay there for 22 minutes extra? Guess what it was? A nickel. One nickel in the corner of my pocket that I missed cost me almost the ability to get on a plane and miss my flight. Consider this. Is one worry or one concern or one situation in your life costing you peace? I encourage you to give it to God. The scripture says, O oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. That we can pour out our heart. We can be honest to God. You might not be able to be honest with people because you're concerned about what they will say or what they will think, but you can be honest to God. And you can be honest with us as the body of Christ. We are all weak people needing the grace of Jesus Christ. We pour out our heart. We pour out all of our cares. What's your anxiety? What are you tense about? What are you fearful over? What do you have phobias about? What are you scared about? We can cast all our cares on him. There's a study answering this question. How much time do you spend worrying? People were asked the question, how much time do you spend worrying? In the average person with this particular study, how much time do they spend? One hour and 50 minutes every day. One hour and 50 minutes every day. You know what that ends up being? That ends up being 12, almost 13 hours a week. It ends up being five years of your life worrying. So here's kind of the understanding. Of these individuals, what do people worry about? Work, finances, being late, a relative or friend's bad health, relationships, missing a plane, a train or a bus, not waking up for the alarm, appearance, safety, eating too much, being liked, missing experiences, growing old, children staying healthy, remembering everything you need to, the economy, pension plan, what to wear, drinking too much, a mortgage, children getting a good education, among others. What do you worry about? What do you spend your time thinking for one hour and 50 minutes every day? And I'm simply going to suggest to you, consider this. Is it not a logical thing that if we're spending that kind of time, if we're that worried, if it's good enough to worry about, it's good enough to pray about? That we, pray, we place it on Him. We kind of look like this, right? Like a donkey with a burden. But consider this. He carries what you cannot carry. I can't carry all the concerns I have for my life. He carries what you cannot carry, but we can carry together. It's the reason why even on this social media circumstance, you bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, you don't have to disclose details if you don't want to, but if you want us to pray with you and pray for you and bear your burden today that you can cast your cares on God and we will cast it with you on him. You're not alone. It's true. Why? Because he cares for you. He cares for you. He loves you. 
This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. You don't have to wonder. The cross of Jesus Christ says if he loved you that much to die on the cross, he loves you enough for the details of your life. I don't know if you saw this ship some years ago, the Reina, off the coast of New Zealand, tipping. It was a terrible situation. It was a complete loss. It sat there now in that spot, and over the years, this is what it looks like. It's fallen apart. If people could see you, how much are you carrying? How many burdens do you have? How many circumstances do you have to deal with? And I ask you the question, can you please take time to cast? Surrender, release, give it up, give it to God. Look at this scripture. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. I want to do an exercise today. I want to do an activity for your life. The question is three possible things. Who's the one person in your life that you think about even more than you think about yourself? Who is that person? Who are you concerned about? Who do you want to give to God and surrender their life again? You know that you think about them and think about them and pray for them. Gifted them to God again today. What about the situation right now? You wish you could snap your fingers and it would change. Maybe it's a situation at work. Maybe it's a situation in the family. Maybe it's a situation with your health. You wish you could snap your fingers and it would be done. It would be over. Have you prayed about it? Or are you just spending time worrying about it? And what about the anticipated future? You know, most people say it isn't our past we think about. It isn't our present we think about. It is our anticipated future. What are you uncertain about? Have you given it to God? You know, the truth is, in this time of COVID, we, as believers in Jesus Christ, have the opportunity to be able to have hope, to have confidence, to have certainty, because we can cast all our cares upon Him, for He cares for us. Please pray with me now as we specifically have those three things in mind, the person, the situation, and the future. Please pray with me. Lord God, we come before you on this day and we ask that you would bless us and you would strengthen us. We pray this day that we can cast all our cares, every last thing upon you, and we praise you for that, that you love us so much. We pray for the people in our life, the person we are thinking about right now. We ask that you would intervene for them. We pray that you would give them precisely what they need. We pray, Lord God, that you would grant grace. We pray for the situation in our life that we want to change. We cast that on you as well. We release it to you. We surrender it to you. We have tried so many times, but we don't have the ability. But we pray for your intervention. And Lord God, we pray for the future for the uncertainty of the future. We pray for that thing that we are truly uncertain about. We don't know what it's going to be around the corner. We don't know how long it will be, and we give it to you. Lord God, in the midst of stress and fear and worry and concerns, we cast all our cares on you because you care for us. We gather all of our prayers in the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We pray that you know on this day, on this second Sunday in September, that you know that you don't have to be overtaken by anxiety, but that you and I can use this scripture that we cast all our anxiety, all our cares, all our worries, all our stress on him because he cares for us. Receive the blessing of God.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you this week. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love she no longer has a place to hide I am not a captive to Chance when I say